All right, LD MMA seat is your boy, the coach, you're live, live, live on the coach's show, the coach show live. Okay, folks, <laughs> here go the thing. I, I told y'all, I told y'all, I told y'all that um, that they were looking to get that belt of all Jermaine Sterling Black behind. I told you how this was going down. I told you this, I, I told you that they're going to do anything to get that belt up off him. I told you. This stoppage was BS, okay? I've had every, I've read every, mostly every top commentator in the sport of MMA say that the stoppage was BS, okay? That agreed with my take on it. That stoppage was completely BS, okay? You know it and I know it. Here's the thing, though, okay? The referee, he, he was he was looking, man. He was looking for a reason to stop this fight. I mean, when all Jermaine Sterling was on his back, you know, he was defending himself, he rolled over to try to get up, okay? That's what he was trying to do. He was trying to get back to his feet. And the referee took that as, oh, well, he turned his back to him and he no longer want to fight. He won out the fight. No, the man was trying to get up, and you can see him scrambling, okay? You can clearly see all Jermaine Sterling scrambling, trying to get back to his feet. And I'm sitting there thinking, since when does a scramble constitute that you don't want to fight anymore? Well, when does that constitute that you're not defending yourself? You're trying to get back to your feet. But everybody saw it, man, but... And you notice how the media now, they're not talking about all Jermaine Sterling, you know, for an immediate rematch. Even though this man defended this belt against uh, Petty Young, okay, he, he got the belt from uh, from Petri Young, got it from him, okay, defended that belt against, what, against Dillashaw, beats a hoo-ho. And you don't think that, you know, fighting that level of opposition, they don't think this man is worthy of an of a automatic title shot or, or a rematch. He's not getting a rematch, okay? He's going to have to, <laughs> this man going to have to, he's going to get on his knees and beg for a title shot. Now, you know, all Jermaine Sterling is that brother, so he ain't going to do that. Okay? He ain't going to, you know, he ain't going to, you know, make biscuits at home. He, he's not going to be a biscuit maker. That's not going to happen. Okay? He's not going to beg on his hands and knees to get a title shot. He, it's, it's just not going to happen. Okay? This man going to have to go through hell and high water in order to, to get another title shot. Which is kind of, it's crazy to me, man. But, you know, they want him to, you know, they want Sugar Sean O'Malley to be the champ because, you know, Shitty Sean is popular. He real popular, okay? Extremely popular. You know, the man brings, you know, put asses in seats. And he's got a huge following, okay? People are going to follow this guy, okay? They want him to represent him as a champion. They never wanted Al Jermaine Sterling to be a champion. They never wanted him to represent that belt and... You didn't even see, you know, by Dana's demeanor, he just, he was thrilled that he got Sean O'Malley as a champion. Thrilled. Because O'Malley's a mouthpiece. He's a mouthpiece. And yes, you know, he's he's had some grueling fights, okay? I, you know what? I'm going to come over here and I'm going to be real balanced, okay? O'Malley has, has had some fights. Now, I remember the one fight where he broke his, he broke his leg, man. The man broke his leg and he finished the fight on one leg. I don't know if y'all remember that fight with Sean O'Malley, but you know I respect the man as a fighter. You know he, I'm not. I don't recall him saying any kind of racist stuff. So I I, I respect him as a fighter. Now if y'all have heard some stuff that this man has said that's racist, you let me know, and then I I definitely won't rock with him. But I do respect him as a fighter, man, because the man went out on one leg, and this man fought on a broken leg. I'm talking about his ankle or whatever was it was broke. It was completely broken. And this man hobbled on one leg and finished the fight and won the fight. So I respect Sean O'Malley in that aspect. I respect him. Okay, the man's a warrior. He ain't going to go in there and quit. Okay, that's what kind of fighter he is. He ain't going to quit. You know, he's going to stand up and give you his best. He's going to give you everything. So he's going to be a fighting champion. Now, I don't know how long he's going to remain a champion, but he's going to be a fighting champion. He's, he's a blood and guts type warrior. Um, and I can respect that about Sean O'Malley. There's just no quit in him. Um, with all that being said, though, I just I think they stopped the fight too soon. I think they stopped it too soon, you know? I mean, damn, so since when, you know, we, 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 we ain't going to let Aljo recover? You know, we ain't going to let the man try to recover? I mean, he the damn champion. Okay, and most of the time, these referees, man, they will they'll let a champion get stopped, okay? They will let a champ get stopped. Like, they'll let him completely get stopped or finished or knocked the hell out. They'll do it because they know that that champion, most referees, they know that that champion have worked their whole life 
to be the champ. They worked their entire life. They 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 worked, and they've they've just put their whole life on the line in order to get that belt. So most referees will let that champion be knocked out. They'll let that champion go out on their shield most of the time. But not this referee. All Jermaine Sterling was nowhere close to being stopped motionless. Wasn't close. He was scrambling. But that's my take on it. That's my take on it. But I I knew. I knew that the day was coming. I knew that they were trying to get that belt off his black PG-13 channel. I knew that they were trying to do it. I mean, even, <laughs> he, 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 it's crazy, man, how all Jermaine Sterling, the way he stands up, and he stood up for black people at one time, and that's not a good lucrative financial uh, move in this climate. Because big companies, they frown on that. When you stand up for black rights, they frown on that. Okay, they frown on that vehemently. They do. And so, you know, it's just not the good financial look for him. But he did it anyway. And he was one of the ones that said, that, you know what, I don't appreciate it. You know, what, 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 what Ho Rogan said. I don't appreciate that. I don't appreciate, you know, what, what he was saying and how, you know, the N-word rant, uh, rant that he was doing. You know, he was one of those people that spoke up. Said, nah, man, that's not cool. Friends and Gano said it wasn't cool. They said it wasn't cool. And I had a dude tell me, man, man, why you on Joe, man? Joe got adopt a black adopted daughter. Well, let's think about that, okay? Let's think about the history of that black adopted daughter, okay? First of all, Joe Rogan was having an affair with the girl's mom, okay? Having an affair with the girl's mom, okay? Um, the girl's dad died. Now, what do you think the mom's going to do? Do you think the mom going to let her daughter, going to let her biracial daughter be on the street? I mean, is that what you think? Did you really think that the woman who Ho Rogan was having an affair with, did you think for one second that she was going to let her biracial daughter be on the street? Of course she's not going to do that. So miss me with all the, you know, Ho Rogan, you know, adopting a, a black daughter. Shut up. I can tell you that now. Be quiet. <laughs> it, ain't, it wasn't because he adopted her. It's because he had to. That That's, <laughs> that's the baby mama. <laughs> He's married to the baby mama. <laughs> stupid. Y'all, somebody, somebody dude's just stupid. Just stupid. <laughs> but anyway, I digress. So what does all Jermaine Sterling do? He's going to have to fight his way back up or he's going to have to move up. Okay, and now, I don't even think Sean O'Malley want to stay in the division because he was talking about how it's just too hard for him to make the weight. Um... And I don't know. I don't know if all Jermaine Sterling want to stay in that division. I, I don't know. Um, but I think, though, at 135, his opportunities are going to be very limited. It's going to be very limited. <laughs> and it's crazy. This man got an amazing record in the UFC. You know, all Jermaine Sterling got, what, got 23 wins, man, four losses. I mean, he's an anomaly in MMA. Anomaly. This man has won most of his career, okay? This man has won, but... I just think his opportunities are very limited at 135. You know, it's probably going to have to go up. Might have to move up. Moving down won't be an option because it's kind of hard for him to make that weight too. All Jermaine Sterling, that's a big bantamweight. Huge bantamweight. So it's, it's going to be tough, man. But you guys tell me what you think, man. This is your boy, the coach. <laughs> you can subscribe if you want to. Yeah, go on and subscribe. <laughs>